the next day we did what we'd done on all other important routes, which is to flip a roll of tape. And mostly you're kind of nervous about being the person who goes first, so you don't want it to land on your side sometimes. But with Sentry, it was both of us flipping this roll of tape going, oh, I want to go first, I want to go first, so badly want to have a go on this. Then it landed on Tom. So Tom went first. There weren't really any expectations of what he was going to do or anything. I was really nervous but I just knew that I had to knuckle down, start to get back that feeling that I did when I trained in the cellar of just getting to a zone, think about how hard I'm trying, just breathe, keep going, pace your arms, pace your legs. I had this mantra of focus on performance, not the goal, as I was going through the route, kind of keep me in this zone, because I didn't want to become aware of my surroundings, because it was so intimidating to be on that route and know the situation that you're in, and the kind of the effort and the pain that you were putting yourself through. If you became aware of that, you, you lost your performance. So I just had to think about how I was climbing and the way in which I was doing it, and not think about that top out either. So he's in his hand fist stacks and he's he's not shouting, but you can hear him like it's a loud whisper. <laughs> it's like, focus on performance, not the goal. Focus on performance, not the goal. It's just like that for the 120 foot, like 15 minutes. <laughs> No, you're just going, focus on performance, not the goal. Focus on performance, not the goal. And you're just there, doing it again and again and again. And as I got around the lip and through this kind of hardest crux section and into that top niche, I was, sh I was shaking, I was really nervous because I was thinking, shit, I could do this. This is fucking insane. I, this is, I'm not ready for this route, but I've got to do it. I'm nearly there, but I've got to focus on performance. I can't think about the goal because the goal was beyond anything I thought I'd ever achieve in my climbing career, honestly. Beyond it, I almost didn't believe that it was possible. And then when I arrived at that last bit, before the last 15 foot of climbing, it was just, it was like a dream. Really strange, really strange. <laughs> I topped out on that route and I just burst into tears. I just completely lost it because 
it was just such a massive kind of outpouring of emotion and effort of two years and belief in myself and putting together a goal and putting everything into it. Uh, I don't even have words for it. I just feel like... I don't know, it just feels like a story that I, I'll tell someone one day that someone I knew did, and it wasn't really, really me. I've never done anything like that, never. I never even believed I'd ever do anything like that. Yeah, thank good I've got such a supportive wife. Probably owe at least half of this to her, to be honest. <laughs> right. Onwards, onwards and supportive. Let's do this. It was kind of like half a cent when I topped out. It really needed for Pete to do it as well. We were going to walk out of that route and walk out of the valley in four hours' time, and he had now had one chance, one slot to do the route. Nice, strong ass shuffles when you need them. Good. I was just like, man, I've got to flipping do this now. Going really well. I was just breaking it down into these sections, these 10 foot sections, basically, what we had down in the cellar. And every time I, I got to a cam that we'd placed, it was just, just like, you know, just another lap. Just, just one more lap, take it bit by bit. I was really nervous that he wouldn't do it and he would have some problems with the pressure and he'd make a mistake. And he was hanging underneath there for like 20 minutes or more, which I couldn't believe. You can't just hang upside down for like 20 minutes without, it, without being completely wrecked, just physically destroyed, surely. He gets to where it turns into merely 45 degree overhanging where you have to invert and start doing like real regular moves and at that point he wasn't even breathing hard I, was, I couldn't believe it And then that was it, he'd done it. He'd redpointed the thing, his second day on the thing. It's just unbelievable. One of the most impressive bits of climbing I've ever seen in my life. I was just blown away by that. It was just, it was the best like climbing experience like ever. Don't like to admit it, but did cry a little bit. <laughs> Tom did as well. <laughs> Hopefully more than me. It just completed it, and when we both came down to the base and like had a good old man hug at the bottom, it was just like, oh yes, you know that's that's an amazing day, and I you know I won't forget that day.